<laughs> Hi, baby. Did you see mommy and daddy out here working? Did you see us out here? You had to say hi. You're such a friendly baby. You're just a sweetheart. Well, it's that time of year again. Got all the plants inside the screen porch and the plastic up, giving them a nice greenhouse. You see, the freeze has come early here in Georgia and we've got to get everything protected that we want to try to save and not have to harvest right away. So Ryan has been out here covering everything up that he can and making sure that we have a protected harvest for a little bit longer because this week's cold is probably going to turn warmer again, isn't it? Next week. Yeah, so we'll try to keep everything going just a wee bit longer. The eggplant are crazy growing. They have so much fruit on them. I could harvest all the fruit and just call it a year, but man, they, they really do want to keep producing. So after a couple of nights of temperatures and freezing, we have a lot of loss. We tried to cover some stuff. But as you can see, the cover blew off some of the peppers. Even the ones that were covered had some damage. These ones were covered, but they had a little bit of damage where the frost fabric touched them. So we saved some peppers, but we definitely lost a lot. Let's see what was over here. I think this was just flowers in this bed. Yep. So, the flower's got an extra stay, and let's see, oops, I don't know, I didn't put this fabric on, so I don't know where all the weights are holding it down. So, let's see what happened with the eggplant. We've got some damage, but most of it is protected and saved. That smell good? Uh -huh. So our hope in covering some of this stuff is because we live in Georgia and in Georgia we don't normally get our freeze this early. So this was a very early freeze and we were hoping, hoping, let's see, oh good, okay. So with the snake gourd bean, not only was I hoping to have more of a harvest, but I was also hoping to leave some on the vine for seed. All of these lemon squash that you see here that look like little pumpkins, those were intentionally left behind to get some seed from. So our intention was never to save everything, but to hopefully save a few things, like this tomato that hadn't ripened all the way yet. You know, if we can get a few tomatoes to finish their green cycle to where we can pick them, great. So we let the green beans go and we let the sweet potatoes go. It's time to harvest these sweet potatoes so there's no point in keeping the vines alive. So I wonder, I wonder <laughs> if we'll have much of a harvest. What do you think? I think that's a good sign when we see some poking out. Haven't even started digging. And there's tubers. Yep, it's going to be good. Now these fall and winter crops did just fine. No problems here. They like it when it gets cold. Only problem we're having is something likes the collards a little too much. What's that you got there, Rowan? A bunny. Why are you holding a bunny? Because he's precious. He's, I'm sorry, did you say soup? He's precious. He's nuggets? He's precious. Precious what? Precious bunny. To eat? No. But isn't that why we got that bunny? No, it was to save him. Save him? I thought we were going to eat him. Not as, as in save him for dinner, no. Uh -huh. Save him as in. 
So, uh, what's wrong with him? Um, I think he broke his leg. Back? Back. So he can't walk on the back legs? Yeah. Well, can he get around? Um, not really. I mean, he could use his front legs, like, to scoot around. Yeah. Is he in pain? Um, we can't tell. Doesn't seem like it. What does he like to eat? He likes to eat vegetables. Like what? Like herbs and um, sweet potato vines. And what do you like to give him? I like to give him food. <laughs> <laughs> he is cute. Does he have a name? Um, his name is Chip. You named him. Not my. You, I didn't name it either. Um, I'm not gonna keep my hopes up too high, but because he's been eating and drinking and his legs twitching every once in a while, it looks like he's. He, but those look like some good signs, so I think he's probably gonna make it. Yeah. So our hope is is that he's gonna regain use. So we're doing anti-inflammatory treatment, rest, but also bringing him out in the grass to sit with the kids and get loved on. He used to do school programs, so he's used to the attention, so it's good for him. He's eating, he's drinking, he's peeing, he's pooping. All of those things seem to be working normal, and we are getting some reaction from the back legs now more so than we were the first day he arrived. The first day he arrived, it was going to be a mercy dispatch and we were going to harvest him for a meal, but the, Ryan and the boys had different plans after they met him. I mean, can you blame him? He is pretty cute. And he does try to move around, so that's a good sign too. So Ryan's comparing him to Autumn. He keeps telling me, well, everybody tell, told you Autumn was never going to walk again and that we should just euthanize her. And uh, you knew that she had the will and the spirit to live. So we kept fighting for her. And that's how he feels about Champ. Is let's keep fighting for this little guy because he doesn't seem to be in pain. We're giving him herbs that are supportive for anti-inflammatory and for pain and for healing so he's getting a lot of different things like that and hopefully we'll see some improvement um like rowan said our we're trying not to get our hopes too high that he'll com make a complete full recovery but he also doesn't have to be soup quite yet either so we're gonna give him a chance to see how he does so our whole hog roast was a complete success it came out perfect and I was able to break down the other hog as well. And we are in the process of smoking the bacon and making some ribs. Can we see what you got going on under there, Ryan? All right, so sneak peek here. Gotta be quick. Ooh. Bacon. Ooh. Who's that big boy? Is Odin a big boy? So we didn't even cover the boys garden and the funny thing is is the tomatoes all got frost but the peppers hardly did at all. They look a little bit frosted on the tips but they seem like they did okay. Hey, sweet girl. Glad to see you're not mooing today. So she, right on time, came back into heat. So she came into heat the day we brought her home. So the weekend we brought her home, she was in heat. And then this weekend, she went into heat again and mooed all day yesterday. Y'all better now. Huh? You're not quite old enough for a boyfriend yet, are you? No.
but you're a sweet gal. She has continued to be just the most amazing addition to our homestead. We are so grateful for this gift that was given to us. She's a happy girl, and she has made us very happy. Haven't you, girl? <laughs> and sweet, sweet Autumn. Autumn, you're just such a success story that Daddy wants to see if he can do it again. You've given Champ a new life because of your success. You're a good inspiration, aren't you, my sweet girl? Yep, if we had given up on Autumn, she wouldn't be here with us. But we never gave up. And she's the sweetest pet goat you could ever have. Loves us. Mm, yes, she does. The Muscovy ducks have taken more to the pasture now. They like staying out here more than the yard, which has been really nice. Because I didn't want yard ducks, I wanted pasture ducks. So now that they're getting bigger, it's just easier for them to stay over here. And then they, they don't try to fight through the fence as much as they used to. We've already harvested a ton of black walnuts, but they continued to fall from the tree. So, lots of extra to throw over the fence for the pigs. Don't worry, I haven't forgot about you, Lashes. You're just not as friendly. Yeah, I know. What about you, Mama? Oh, you're looking for some hay you think I got? bread or something. Friendship is a little bit more allowable, but you see, even she takes steps back when I go to get affection. Pennywoods just aren't, like, super affectionate. Maybe if they were bottle raised, it'd be different. Or if I had them from birth and handled them, they might be different. We'll see. We're still planning on breeding them. We're gonna get a Dexter bowl and, uh, Breed them to that, and maybe when they calve, they'll turn into big sweethearts. I heard you sneaking up behind me. Never want to let a cow sneak up behind you. Especially if there's any potential that they could come into heat. Um, which, having one cow in heat on the property means the others might come into heat and sink up. And then we have these adorable goblins. They're growing up so fast. And they're starting to make their little noises. I can't see through the fence. There we go. can kind of see them now. I'm underneath the tarp. <laughs> so these guinea fowl are going to be free range eventually too. We're just growing them out nice and big first to help them fight off any predators. And then there were two. So we harvested her two sisters. The biggest one and the smallest one. I thought the smallest one was the noisy one. This one is a talker. I didn't mean to keep the talker. But the talker has waddles, so kind of a win-win. So it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Uh-huh. <laughs> kind of just means she has personality, right? And then Mama, we almost harvested you instead and just did one. No, you don't think so? You think you guys should get a turn with Bowser before you guys get harvested? Is that what you think? Yeah? Have another litter of, of a Cooney Cooney cross with American Guinea Hog? That sounds like a good idea to me. These guys have a little Cooney Cooney in them, but it was like their grandfather, so kind of mostly American Guinea Hog. Trying to find a registered board to go with this beautiful registered Cooney Cooney sow, but not having much luck. I can't afford to buy one, so I was hoping I could just borrow one. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. She's so, she's so stinking cute. But if it ends up being that I can find one that I am 100% sure that's purebred and not registered, I might go that route. Um, the American Cooney Cooney Association uh, registration is having some changes right now, so it leaves a lot of us feeling nervous about registering future litters. 
So we'll see how that goes. It's a transition and transitions aren't always easy for organizations of this size. So I saw what happened to their American Dairy Goat Association's changeover of technology and it caused a lot of problems and it convinced me to stop trying to register goats. So I hope it doesn't convince me to stop registering pigs because I think the registration does protect those of us who do have purebred because there's so many people selling mixed breeds now that aren't truly cooney cooney. And it's not fair because they're making the prices lower than they should be. So then we can't get the price that they should be going for because people who know that they have mixes are selling them saying they're pure cooney cooney and not charging the full price for a pure cooney cooney. So kind of kind of messes with the market. We'll see. We're not in it just for the money. We're also trying to raise our own food and trying to be self-sustainable. And that rooster is really gross because he's over there picking the grain out of the pig poop. Yeah. Love it. Life on the farm, baby. I think somebody got jealous that I was giving the pig all the attention. <laughs> My cows. <laughs> They're like... Molly, you fed us now. Yet if I try, they're not gonna. I already gave Titus his pets. He's content now. One thing I can really say that I love about the piney piney, piney piney woods, no, they're not cooney coonies. One thing I can really say I love about the piney woods cattle breed is they get fat on air. Look at these girls. They have only had a small amount of hay added to their pasture every day. They have not had grain and they're fat. So bringing them to a texture, maybe their offspring will produce something that I'll be able to milk. Or if it's a bull, we can make it a steer and raise meat for our freezer. So either way, they are a great homestead cow and uh, maybe just stick with the mini Jersey heifer for now for our milking endeavor. And these guys will be a question mark as to how they're going to be after they have babies. Maybe it'll be easier then, or maybe their babies will end up being dairy. So we'll see. I still love them. Bill, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. So Bill is a barrow that came with Peaches as a companion, but he's getting so fat. And the problem is, is he's stealing the food from the other two pigs out here when we feed. He is getting a lot more food than a barrel should, and she's getting less than she should, so it's not fair. And it's really impossible to separate them when you feed when they're in the same paddock. We try placing the bowls far apart, but you can definitely tell he's getting more to eat than she is, and it should be vice versa. Bill, Bill, Bill. Don't know what to do with you, son. I know a lot of you are probably screaming at your TV right now or your phone saying, Eat him! The thought has crossed my mind. But he was given to us with the intention that he was going to be a pet companion. We don't really need the companion part of it anymore. So he's technically just a pet because she has Bowser as her companion. And we do have the other two gilts that we can put with her if we need to. So it is tempting, but I do like to keep my promises. So if you're watching and you give us permission to eat Bill, let me know. <laughs> if the own, previous owner is watching. That's what, that's what I'm talking to. Um, so, yeah. We're just uh, trying to get everything caught up. It's still October so we still have time to do some of our fall planting so we're still gonna be doing some of that even though we had a freeze already the rest of the season looks really good for a while it doesn't look like we're gonna have another freeze for a long time so crossing our fingers we get a good start to the fall season and if not we'll pick back up in the spring because I have been so busy all of this work that I've been doing preserving vegetables I have so much canned I have so much dehydrated I have so much frozen and everything had to be chopped, peeled, you know, lots of labor with my hands. And then when it came to scraping and scalding two hogs and butchering them, it 
ended up being a lot of work and we got some deer shoulders from a friend so we've actually been doing a ton of butchering and i do all the butchering and that has really irritated my carpal tunnel and my hands are numb and painful now to the point where i can't even do anything with my hands today so today my hands get a break which means i get to make a video for you guys uh, this is my first break in like a month so i'm sorry that there haven't been more videos i really truly have wanted to video some of the stuff i've been doing but it's just it's too much when I have three little kids running around and I'm trying to get stuff done to video on top of that. It's just too much. So I've just been getting the stuff done. And that is the most important part of this journey is that we get the stuff done that needs to get done so that we have lots of food to eat all winter and we will have a lot of food this winter. So I'm really happy about that. And I will try to document more of our journey as things slow down and we come into the winter pace we'll be able to talk more about other things like ferments and stuff so it'll be more of the slower winter pace but also lots of great content and information so if there's anything you're interested in that you have been thinking about trying or doing that's homesteading related in any way whether it's cooking preserving gardening livestock any questions you have let me know I'm happy to help you out and provide some support and motivation it's truly what i'm here for i want to inspire others to do what we're doing you know try to be as self-sustainable as you can you may have a bigger property and be able to do more and you may have a smaller property and be able to do less either way as long as you're trying to do some stuff to be self-sustainable it's a win just a little uh, pro tip 101 here. If you're ever having a big gathering and you don't want your septic tank to get full, which ours already is, we really need to get it pumped. Take an old chair, put an old toilet seat on it, attach your toilet paper roll, put a bucket underneath, catch everything, and use pine pellets. So you got a scoop in there, you can put the pine pellets on top of your refuse. Works perfect for a party or a gathering gives you privacy pretty cool um okay ryan what all are you using on cool. these ribs despite the variety that you see present i'm using apple wood <laughs> and i'm at the stage two i've smoked them for two hours and now i'm gonna wrap them all in foil and these ribs are from our pig right Yes. Sweet. These are figs. So that one wasn't. Except for that one. But these are all the ones that were in the same package? And yep. then that one was from the other one? Or was it from this one? Uh, I believe it was from this one. Yeah. So I did that. That's what I butchered. <laughs> that's the baby back ribs along the loin. And that's the spare ribs that go down towards the stomach. All right. Well, now... All right, I just took the temperature of the bacon and uh, we have two pork bellies in here and so the temperature on the bottom one now is right there at that spot that I want it to be so I'm gonna pull them off and wrap them up in some butcher paper and, and we have bacon. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Oh yeah. That is two pretty big size slabs of bacon carrying inside the paper while they cool off. This might not look that appetizing, but I think it's going to be amazing. It is smoked pig skin from the pig roast that I have dehydrated and we are going to fry them as chicharrones smoked chicharrones at that and if i said that wrong i apologize that's just the way i read it so don't come at me so one of the main reasons why i wanted to scrape and scald these pigs instead of just skinning them was i wanted some fried pork skin some pork rinds some chicharrones some chicharrones whatever you call it it's delicious 
and it is something that I have been snacking on a lot more lately, seeing how I've cut a lot of carbs out of my diet, the, they have taken the place of my potato chip addiction. So I already did the method where you boil the skin for two hours from fresh, boil for two hours, dehydrate for 18 hours, and then fry them in the lard. And it came out excellent. But I had the genius idea that the skin off of the one that we did for the pig roast, which is completely smoked, probably can skip the boiling stage because the gelatinous material has already been broken down by eight hours of smoking. So I put them in the dehydrator to make sure that they had the right moisture level so that they will puff up like a nice pork rind. So I'm really hoping that I'm going to have like the perfect pork rind, but with a smoke flavoring. I think it's going to be the best of both worlds. If this works out, I'm a genius. If it doesn't, then the dogs have a treat. <laughs> well, I have to say, these came out really good. They're darker than your normal pork rind because they've been smoked first already. But these puffy, fluffy ones, they're nice and crispy. And then these that curled up differently, they're more like a potato chip texture. So, I don't know if different skin from different areas of the body fries up differently. I'm thinking that's what it was because I did it in the same level heat the whole time. So, overall, big thumbs up. Ooh, that looks, that looks really good, Ryan. Oh, I can't wait. What does our pig look like? Let me see. Oh my gosh. Mm. I am salivating. All right, so how much longer does it have to go? Um, I'm gonna put, take it out of the foil and put sauce on it and could go for another 30 minutes to an hour. All right, fall off the bone ribs, y'all. That's for dinner tonight. Down here in Miss Elsie's big garden, we have okra that we left to go to seed. You can see it's producing tons of little seeds. What, Odin? You looking at the birds with daddy? Mm -hmm. We also left all these marigolds so that they could go to seed. Tons and tons of marigold seed on these plants. These plants got so big and beautiful. Miss Elsie had some that were so big she couldn't pull out her tomato cages because the marigolds were so gigantic. And this beautiful native wildflower edge along the edge of this garden is providing nectar sources. There's Verbena bonaceris, there's Fleabane Daisy Aster, there's Solidago, which is Goldenrod, and there's Marigolds mixed in, along with lots of native grasses to provide habitat for the beneficial insects. This is what I would rather see along the edge of a garden than a lawn any day of the week. And my bees up there are absolutely loving and taking advantage of this. And there's one of our honeybees now, nectaring on this goldenrod bloom. Aw, that's sweet. I love to see that. Good girl.